So uh, welcome to this ACLED webinar. Uh, I'm joining us today from a very sunny Bujumbura. Uh, appreciate everyone for coming. I'm Lad Sirwat, uh, ACLED's Africa Regional Specialist, and I'm moderating the discussion today. I'm joined by two of our experts on the project who will be providing a briefing. Um, we're joined by ACLED's Senior Research Coordinator, Peter Buffen who's been working on conflict and governance issues throughout East Africa, um, including Northern Mozambique for over 10 years now. Um, we'll also be speaking with Cabo Legado's research consultant, Tomas uh, Kefas, who's been working on violent conflict and extremism uh, in Mozambique. Uh, for those who may be new to ACLED, we're the Armed Conflict Location Event Data Project which is a disaggregated data collection, analysis, and crisis mapping project. Uh, this year, we're excited to celebrate our 10th year working to promote data-driven decision-making and programming uh, for the mitigation and prevention of conflict. We have several um, observatories around the globe, including our Ethiopia Peace Observatory, uh, recently launched Yemen Conflict Observatory, and of course, for many of you joining, Cabo Legado. Uh, which means Connected Cape, uh, and this specific conflict observatory was launched in 2020 by ACLED in partnership with uh, Zidamar News and MediaFacts to better monitor the uh, political political violence dynamics in Mozambique. Uh, this work couldn't be possible without the generous support from the European Union to provide us with the additional capacity and monitoring needed for the complex and ever-changing context within uh, especially Northern Mozambique. Um, so this observatory supports uh, real-time data collection on insurgency in Cabo Delgado province and provides timely analysis of conflict trends. All the data is updated weekly and can be accessed through our data export tool, through curated specific data files and also our API. The observatory also produces a number of analytical outputs, fortnightly updates, monthly reports, and actor profiles, and those are both available in English and Portuguese. Uh, for the briefing today, we will have a recording minus the Q&A, uh, which we will have available on the Zitmar uh, podcast following today's presentation. So for today, we'll be providing a situational update on the current dynamics in the country, covering this most recent outbreak of violence in Cabo Delgado, and give you the opportunity to ask questions with uh, our experts during a live Q&A session. Uh, I think this conversation really does come at an interesting time. Uh, broadly speaking, since late part of 2017, uh, over 5,000 people have been killed by the insurgency in northern Mozambique, uh, and almost half of those, of those uh, fatalities have been uh, civilians. And driven by the violence uh, from the Islamist insurgent group, uh, now called the Islamic State Mozambique, um, the insurgency has really undermined governance in the province uh, and delayed any substantial development. Uh, potentially destabilizing to the entire region, uh, three international forces are also deployed there. Uh, and recently, uh, a rise in political violence events, primarily driven by ISM, comes as the SADA Commission in Mozambique is about to withdraw. Um, so today's presentation will look at these recent developments and consider how the remaining forces will be uh, following um, SEMIM's withdrawal. So without further delay, um, we will begin the presentation with some background and some detail uh, from these recent events from Tomas. So Tomas, over to you. Thank you very much, Lad. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we have prepared a presentation that will go along with uh, our analysis. Uh, yes, uh, uh, in addition uh, uh, in addition to the projects mentioned by Vlad, the couple of other project produces podcasts and new bulletins in five languages spoken in Mozambique, uh, which are distributed via avosh.org website and podcast platforms. Uh, bringing news and analysis to the populations affected by the conflict, mainly in northern Mozambique. Our sources of information range from reliable sources, such as Itamar News and Media Facts, our partner organizations, national and international news outlets, outlets as well as our network of uh, 
uh, community reporters. Uh, so going to the next slide. Yes, uh, our network of uh, reporters is extensive and covers uh, three northern uh, provinces of Mozambique, uh, Cabo Delgado, Nampula, and uh, Niassa. Uh, the community reporters uh, are a very, very important source for us because they allow us to get information uh, from people close to the events on the ground and reports on incidents in real time. Uh, most of our community reporters are based in Cabo Delgado, uh, we have 27, uh, uh, one in Ampula, one in Yasa, and 25 in Cabo Delgado. And they have consistently reported on incidents of violence, human, uh, humanitarian and social situation, and more other aspects. The uh, community reporters' reports is verified through generation of sources, both within the network and with other trusted sources, such as uh, media outlets. outlets. Okay, now let's start to the uh, analysis of the conflict in Cabo Delgado. Uh, we analyze political violence events, which Atlet defines as a single altercation in which force is often used by one or more groups to achieve a political goal, and includes, for example, battles, explosions, and violence against civilians. Since the conflict uh, broke out uh, in Cabo Delgado uh, in 2017, Akled has uh, recorded uh, 1,762 uh, political violence events. Uh, the reported fatalities is uh, almost 5,000 uh, uh, fatalities from political violence events. Um, and uh, part of it, it's uh, reported fatalities from violent targeting civilians. Uh, the last category is, uh, that encompasses all political violence uh, uh, events that target civilians, such as uh, sexual violence, attacks and abductions, uh, forced disappearance, uh, and so on. So it's a very important uh, category for us as a public guardian and also uh, athlete. I'll move to the next slide. Okay, so here we have uh, a chart of political violence and uh, reported fatalities in Cabo Delgado. Um, uh, so we're going to look at the trends in the number of events and fatalities since 2021, which will, uh, is a very significant year in Cabo Delgado conflict, uh, which was marked by the arrival of the foreign troops and the end of the insurgent occupation in Mosimba da Praia as well as uh, the decline in insurgents' uh, capacity. Uh, the blue bars reflect the number of events and the orange line is the trend in fatalities. The first peak in terms of both, uh, 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 the first peak uh, refers to the number uh, of fatalities uh, and also uh, the number of events is related to the attack in Palma, which took place in March uh, 2021. Uh, over the three quarters of uh, the reported fatalities that came during the fighting between government forces and insurgents around Palma uh, town uh, took place in June, which is the uh, biggest one in terms of reported fatalities. Um, uh, in November, also 2021, another surge of violence as you can see in the chart, where insurgents repeatedly carried out attacks on civilians and clashed uh, with the uh, Mozambican state forces, local militias, uh, troops from Southern Africa, developed community. Uh, uh, and then we have another peak in June 2022nd. It's uh, just in the middle. Uh, in June 2022nd, we saw a significant surge in violence as insurgents broke out uh, the northern districts of Cabo Delgado to launch an, elite, an offensive into uh, southern districts of Anquabi, Shiruri, and Mekufi, and pushing as far as to the border of Nampula province. And then uh, uh, in almost all 2023, the trend of in incidents and fatalities was relatively low. The insurgents adopted the Hearts and Minds campaign and spent most of the time uh, confined in the bush. Uh, the number of uh, insurgents had dropped significantly from the occupation of Mosimba da Praia in 2021, uh, 
uh, to, to below 300, according to the United uh, uh, Nations. Well, uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2024, the situation changed completely in capital garden. However, from December, uh, November to December 2023, the insurgents had been able to carry out attacks on government positions in the districts of Makomia and Mizumbi. However, uh, insurgent violence escalated in January as part of the Islamic State's global campaign, kill them where uh, you find them. Um, a struggle to control the Makomia coast and islands also continued in January as the results of the occupation of uh, Mukoju in the, zone, in the coastal zones of Makomia uh, from, from the 21st to, to 31st of January. Uh, making the first time that the, uh, the, the group has controlled a significant area since they were expelled from uh, Musim Bada Praia. Uh, I'll move to the next slide. Yes. Um, uh, in, on the, uh, I, was, I was talking about some of the attacks that took place uh, uh, in between December and uh, November and December in uh, in in Makumi and Medumbi, where the, um, the government forces uh, have registered at least 19 uh, fatalities from attacks by insurgents groups. Um, so as I was saying, uh, uh, then moving to January, the insurgents began uh, to this uh, to descend to the uh, south, starting from Mukoju and passing through the districts of Kisanga, Metuji, Ankwabi, Mekufi, Shiuri, uh, with some going uh, far as uh, the Luriu River. Uh, this was the second time that the insurgents had made such a geographical move, uh, having done uh, previously in August 2022, as I mentioned. Uh, but this time it was different without uh, uh, much uh, opposition from, from government, government forces. Uh, the latest insurgents attacks have resulted in a new wave of displacement and humanitarian crisis. More than uh, 110,000 people have been displaced through, throughout the province with uh, more than 9,000 displaced in Shiuri district alone. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's important to mention one of the most important incidents also that took place uh, in Makomia just before the insurgents moved to the south. Uh, it was uh, uh, an event that took place in uh, 9 of February, where the insurgents inflicted the highest number of fatalities on Mozambican troops uh, uh, since the Palma, the Mosima de Praia and Palma attacks, uh, which killed at least uh, 20 soldiers. Uh, Mokoju is uh, a very important town for both uh, for the conflict because uh, since January, it has exchanged hands between the Islamic State and the security forces at least twice. Um, uh, just uh, to talk a little bit about the move on the south, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, the, the insurgent groups did not face much uh, opposition from uh, state uh, security forces, uh, uh, which allowed the insurgents uh, uh, not only to go further to the Luri River uh, on the border to Nampula, but to return to north and uh, during the return to the north of Cabo Delgado, they occupied the town of Kisanga and the island, uh, the, the, the town of Kisanga and the island of Kirimba in the Ibo district between the 2nd of March to March 19, until they decided to withdraw to Mokoju in Makomia district. Well, the occupation of Mokoju continues to this day and there's no sign of any operation to dislodge them from there. Uh, well, this will allow the insurgents to regroup uh, uh, and also to develop plans and strategies for new possible attacks, uh, uh, possible after the uh, Ramadan period. Well, in terms of the number of insurgents, of insurgents uh, uh, it seems to, to be increasing based on the reports that we've received. Uh, we don't have an exactly number right now, but we could estimate at least between 500 to 600 men. Uh, I will pass now the, the floor over to Peter Boffin.
Thank you very much, uh, Tomash. That was a perfect setup. I appreciate that. Um, slide, please, Gina. Right. Um, as Tomas has, Tomas has explained, that there there have been there has been a, a spike of dramatic and very distressing events um, that are that have mostly taken place in Kisanga, Chiure, Metuji, and Mikufi districts in recent months. Um, however, for for most of the presentation, uh, I'll be focusing on where where Tomas last mentioned about Makomia district, and I will be focusing on events there or developments rather, as they tell us something about the current state of Islamic State Mozambique, its approach to the conflict, how it is seeking to establish itself in, in parts of Makamiya district, and some insight into, into those who may be leading that process and the the, 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 the strength of their uh, their command. With, um, with Samim withdrawal, with the withdrawal of the SADC mission in Mozambique, Samim, um, expected in July. I'll also be mentioning operations by international intervention forces, Mozambique's defense and Mozambique's defense and security forces in the district, and their success or otherwise. And hopefully, all of that will help us uh, consider prospects for 2024. And the image um, is really to remind uh, remind you, and indeed to remind myself, that all of the actors in this conflict have sort of sort of com competing and overlapping. Um, uh, interests across the region. So while we focus on um, on Macamia, it's it's uh, it's important to bear that in mind. A slide, please, Gina. So yeah, let's focus on Macamia district. Um, the points that you can see on the map indicate the concentration of political violence events um, in the province from first of September twenty twenty three up to the fifteenth of March. Um, last month and, the, the, and then these are events that have involved a recorded by ACLED and involving Islamic State Mozambique. Um, other other districts will get a mention uh, but for now I just want to look at that um, strikingly neat pattern of events in Makomia district. Western Makomia first. Um, in Western Makomia the, 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 the small number of events uh, in that period has been concentrated around the, the, the small town of Chai in the north as well as on the N380 highway that runs um, to Makomia town and, and further south. Attacks have focused on civilians. Um, when state forces have been involved, it, is, it has mostly been the Mozambique Defense and Security Forces and the local force being both, and the, the security forces being uh, both the uh, Rapid Intervention Unit from the police and the Defense Armed Forces of Mozambique, the military. The local force is well established in Chai um, and in Makomia town. ISM's continued presence um, in Chai tells a story. They've always been active in, 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 in the area that, that with events recorded starting in 2018 and every year since. Um, events involving ISM in that area grew considerably in 2020 and 21. Once the group began to concentrate on targeting district towns and main roads, particularly the M380. And actions peaked in 2022 in that area with over 40 events that year, um, probably reflecting the group's dispersal um, across the province and their operation in much smaller groups than they have been used to operating beforehand. And the dispersal um, being undertaken by international uh, intervention forces. Um, as well, and at the time, there were also attempts to uh, initial attempts to dislodge them from Katupa Forest, which I'll be mentioning more than once. Uh, Katupa Forest lies um, sort of um, east and southeast of Chai, towards the coast. Um, the and the 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 um, the, the area is a bit of local forces here, and it's all the intermittent forces over the years. Seven events in the area so far this year maintain 2023's rate of events and are linked to that um, continued presence in Katupa. Now let's look at the coast to the east. The coast has seen a similar number of events in the past uh, six or so months, but with a very, very different pattern. The group has mostly been engaged in clashes with um, FADM and occasionally these 
these events being in Kojo and around account for 33 of the 36 fatalities suffered by Mozambican forces during fighting for control of Mkojo and, and Pangani since the 26th of December. ISM finally won that struggle on the 9th of February when they overran a FADM base in the village. The, the remaining the that we have not recorded any successful deployments of IEDs since October 2023. Um, the pattern um, illustrates marked differences in relations uh, that, that that ISM has with communities. In in, on, in in coastal areas, there is no local force to resist the group, as there is in, in Chai and Makamea town. Um, presence of local forces is, is a pretty good proxy for popular support for the government. They are present where there is significant support for, for, for Lima, and in the areas in which they ha um, are present, such as Mweda and Nangadi, um, Chai and Makamea town, uh, they have been established by um, sort of, sort of Filimo members and officials at grassroots level initially, and that and they are absent where that support does not exist. So you, you have them in Musimba de Praia, maybe in Awase, but in Musimba de Praia town, they've not emerged organically, and they certainly haven't in in in, in coastal Macomia. So that this this pattern of events, when combined with other sources, does give some clues to. Um, uh, current location, legal uh, ISM's relationship with Islamic State structures and adherence to its ideology. Uh, slide, please, Gina. In 2021, uh, Peter, just yeah. note, uh, we are getting a little bit of disturbance in your uh, sound. Um, seeing a few in the chat are also having a similar issue. Is it still? Um, not sure. Uh, it's intermittent. You, I'm not sure if you have a set of headphones nearby you might try, but uh, you can proceed if not. Let me proceed. Um, let me proceed slowly. And please, please alert me if, if, if you have a similar issue. Um, yeah, international intervention that came in mid-2021 from the deployment of Rwandan security forces bilaterally and the multilateral uh, SADC force forced ISM to radically rethink how it operated. The large bases that they had maintained in southern Musimba de Praia and elsewhere were disrupted. Large groups of fighters could no longer be put in the field. And ISM's ambitions of 2021 to control district towns, to disrupt government and economy through control of, of, of main routes um, and by mass displacement had to be put aside. But this, however, may be changing. Um, ISM, in terms of um, in terms of basis, appears to be restricted to Makomea district with significant and effective sorties to the south that Tomash, uh, that, that, that Tomash outlined. We've seen um, no sustained period of political violence involving ISM in the border district of Nangadi since December 2022 and January 2023. In Musimba de Praia, there's been nothing since January. In Muidumbe, nothing since December. But this pushed this push south over January, February, um, and March. However, this sort of containment, if you like, of um, ISM does not seem to be cut. There's no evidence emerging of offensive operations by Mozambique's Defence and Security Forces, the Rwandan Security Forces, or indeed Samin, that can account for this, this, this concentration. They don't seem to be moving away from something. It just seems to be a strategic choice. So ISM actions have been recorded around Chai up to February 2024, attacks on civilians, as well as roadblocks on the N380. And these actions likely emanate from ex camps that continue to exist in Katupa Forest. And we understand that there are at least three such, such camps southeast of Chai. Um, and we've been, have been receiving consistent reports of the existence of these camps for some, the continued existence of these uh, camps 
um, for some months now. And this is despite joint operations conducted by Rwandan security forces, Samim, FDS and local forces in the final quarter of last year and possibly earlier, as well as the intermittent presence of, of Rwandan security forces in Chai over the past two and a half years. So they, they are well, well established in, 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 in Katupa Forest and have not yet been removed. Joint operations on the coast um, have maybe been less extensive. Um, joint Mozambique and Samim operations of some sort were undertaken last year. This did see um, a notable success in August when Ibn Omar, the insurgency's well-established military leader, was killed in an ambush near Kitarajo. However, you, you will recall that this was an ambush undertaken by ISM rather than an offensive operation undertaken by state forces. Um, and, and as we shall see later, this seems to have not disrupted the leadership function within ISM. Operations undertaken in Makomia district, as well as in Chure and Kisanga most recently, have shown that once again, ISM is able to mobilize large numbers of fighters. Reports from Kisanga last month estimated that hundreds of fighters overtook the town, though we couldn't get an, uh, an exact figure. Or a, or a reasonable estimate. The 9th of February attack on Mukojo certainly involved dozens of fighters, um, according to images released by Islamic State um, uh, centrally. And local sources at the time estimated that there may have been up to 150 fighters involved in the fighting around 9th of February when uh, control of Mukojo was secured. So ISM has, to some extent, um, repositioned itself with an identifiable core area, the Makomia coast, and is able to mobilize at scale and once again uh, threaten towns in the province. Uh, Kisanga, of course, was, was um, overwhelmed for, for up to 17 days. And there is, a, I think we can say there's an active threat to Makomia, Makomia City, the district headquarters of Makomia district. Um, slide please, Gina. So the picture that you see on the right um, is taken from the Islamic State weekly newsletter um, Al Naba, uh, showing an IS leader pro pre preaching to villagers in Makomia district, likely Dar Darumba village near Mukojo. It was published last month on the 22nd of February, and it gives a, a stylized and posed, if, if, if not entirely inaccurate, representation of of life there now and ISM's role in its relationship to the community. The group is now well embedded in Mukojo, Kitarajo, and the town of Kobre, also known as Ilala, which lies between the two, and does seem to be trying to establish some form of rule, and it may have the people to allow itself to do that in this particular area. There's a lot of inf there is a considerable amount of information available, which helps us understand how ISM has managed to achieve this. And this is thanks to Mozambican journalists in a wide range of publications, our colleagues in Zitimbara Media Facts, our community reporters, as well as academics from organizations such as IESE and OMO. Um, last week, the Islamic State spokesperson, um, if you like, uh, in his uh, 10, his, his statement uh, celebrating 10 years of IS, praised IS, um, ISM for upholding the rule of Sharia as, as they tried to illustrate with this photo. And recent issues of al Naba have highlighted ISM's preaching in these parts of Makomia district. And in reality, that phrase upholding the rule of Sharia is, is some ways a fair reflection of how, how the group is behaving in the, 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 the stretch of land between Mukojo and Kitarajo villages on the coast. Um, one figure we understand to be, sorry, the teachings that these people are disseminating, they're not new in Makomia, and neither are the individual leaders who are undertaking, uh, undertaking this. One figure we understand to be active in the area currently is Muamudu Saha, who was reportedly there in August. 
And thanks to Arlindo Cisale of Pinnacle News and Sergio Cicciava of IESC, we know quite a lot about him. He was originally from Mukojo, was involved with the Al Suna Wal Jama sect from which ISM grew before the insurgency. And indeed, in 2015, he was agitating for the sale of alcohol to be banned in Makomia. And in 2017, he was arrested arising from a dispute with more moderate Muslims in the Al Furqan Mosque in, in Makomia town. Um, divisive and confrontational, uh, Sergio Chava has noted his notoriety and influence across Makomia and, and with similar to prior districts. And in Mukojo, he is a, he is a known figure in the area. And whether popular or not, ISM's current directives in the area, banning uh, sale of alcohol, banning tobacco, policing uh, men's haircuts, policing the length of men's trousers, uh, this is this is not new to the community. The bombastic sort of language used by uh, in IS statements may make the reader presume that there is some significant exaggeration. But we and while we shouldn't overstate the um, the area controlled by, by this group and the resources that they control, they can fairly be described as as, as at least trying to um, pursue one of their own interpretation of. Um, of um, Islamic law, if you like, in this small part of Makomia district. Other ISM figures active in the area are Saidi Bosa and Momade and Suko, both again, both from Mukojo and neighboring villages. Both have long been in, uh, active with the group. Bosa's involvement is thought to go back to 2016. Um, and like so, like Sahas' involvement predates the insurgency and goes back to the original Al Suna Wal Jama sect. Still, there is a lot that we don't know. We don't know that the the the, the, the exact sort of ranking of these men in the group have they replaced Ibn Obar or not? Um, we're not entirely sure of their exact roles, but we can be sure that despite the killing of Ibn Omar, Ibn Omar leadership structures appear to be intact, and there is a if you like, a new, a new generation of leaders coming through. Um, we should also note that the area that they control is not cut off from the rest of Makomia. There, there, there is just one access road, uh, which runs from Makomia town to Mukojo, and that gives access to the uh, coast north of Mukojo. Um, this road is still open. Traders still move back and forth on the road, despite the best intentions of the defense and security forces. Um, and even ISM itself has mounted roadblocks recently to try and control access to the coast um, and likely picking up um, picking up tubbles as well. Uh, slide number five, please. It's difficult to assess the, um, the legitimacy that these leaders have in the community, and I'm conscious that the way I've been talking about them uh, may even, if it even sort of, uh, give them some legitimacy. Um, the photograph that we see here um, was circulating widely on social media uh, in Mozambique. Uh, it was one of a set of photos uh, taken by someone in hiding under this, this uh, corrugated iron structure, a number of photos and one video clip that showed um, two to three fighters uh, relaxing on the streets of Kisanga, um, clearly not feeling any threat from the, the young men, women and children who were passing by seemingly um, unbothered. And, and while there has been, and there was no great displacement of people upon their entry to Kisanga, nevertheless, we can be sure that many, uh, many will have been traumatized. There is more and more evidence of children having been kidnapped in Kisanga. Uh, just this morning, we received a report of one child who in recent days managed to escape a madrasa in the bush between uh, Kisanga and Mukojo and who, um, by, by his own smarts, was able to make his way back to uh, Makomia, Makomia town in recent days. And he was surely not the only one taken and other, other um, uh, hostages released um, in the past week or so, um, taken in Mimtuje and then who were then in Kisanga, have, have spoken of, um, yeah, very poor conditions in which people in the camps are living. Um, Next slide, please. So we have, um, we've mentioned Islamic State. Um, I've mentioned um, 
Yeah, the, 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 how, the, how, the, how, how Islamic State centrally has taken the, the, the positions in, in Makami as, 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 a, as a significant propaganda point. However, the um, one way of measuring the strength of this affiliation is through the data that um, Islamic State is producing. The infographic on the right covers the period 27th of December to the 16th of February. And on the face of it, the um, and it was released the 22nd of February in Al Nava um, uh, newspaper. And I've, uh, I've given a newsletter, I've given a, a comparison between the two sets of uh, their, their data and what uh, ACLED data shows for that period. And if you look at our event data, the discrepancy in events is likely accounted for by categorization issues, uh, though the number of um, Mozambican bases attacked uh, seems firm. The difference in fatalities we can likely ascribe to ACLED's um, well-found conservatism in counting fatalities, and, I, and Islamic states need to maximize those figures. But they also tell us um, they also tell us something else that um, these figures that I think can be argued are more or less accurate depend on clear communications from the field up to the IS media team wherever they sit likely through the highest levels and ISM. And what goes up must come down. So parallel to this, you likely have a functioning command structure to direct the behavior of units and the management of resources. So these figures give you some tentative clues to the group's resilience. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so we have um, Islamic State in Mozambique in a position where it's able to uh, mobilize large numbers of, of, of fighters, uh, controls a certain amount of territory in two significant parts of the district, uh, and in one um, part of the district, Katupa Forest, where they've maintained a presence for some years. And we're, all, we're about to see the Southern uh, African Development Community, Community Mission in Mozambique uh, withdraw in July, on the 15th of July. Um, this opens up particular risks for Makamiya Sede, the district headquarters of Makamiya, where, where people living there certainly feel under threat and, and uh, seem to expect a, 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 um, an, an attack from uh, Islamic State Mozambique at some point. Um, there's a longer term vulnerability of Mueda, uh, where the Botswana, where Botswana Defense Force was uh, deployed. Uh, and managed to maintain, uh, contain I, um, ISM forces in the lowlands of, uh, of Midumbi district. And there's also um, uh, issues around border security, in, uh, particularly in Nagadi, where you have um, Tanzania and Lesotho, uh, troops from Tanzania and Lesotho uh, deployed as part of SAMIM, but also to complicate matters, a bilateral uh, force uh, from Tanzania, the Tanzanian People's Defense Force, deployed in Mandimba town. Uh, slide, please. The there is some uncertainty about the uh, role of the Rwandan security forces, who have been uh, based in Palma and Musimba prior districts, and have very successfully uh, secured those districts. And they also have a small base in Ankwabi district. However, they do their current defense uh, posture appears to be defensive. Um, the up until January, there certainly were, were persistent events over, over 2024 in Southern Musimba Pride District, and there didn't seem to be a, uh, an aggressive posture taken by RSF to remove uh, ISM from Southern Musimba Pride uh, Forest. If, if they are to uh, uh, be allocated new areas of responsibility in the, li in the light of um, Simon's withdrawal, that would of course imply a lot more troops and whether they have the resources for that, whether anyone's willing to pay for that, uh, and whether they'll be able to have the same success in terms of community relations as they have had in Palma and Sumida prior is unclear. And we need to remember that they have been ultimately unsuccessful thus far in clearing Katupa Forest. Uh, next slide, please. Tanzania People's Defense Force, they have a, a small uh, deployment in Nangadi district with no known end date. And their operations, both on the Tanzanian side of the border and in Nangadi are, are critical to maintaining border security. And maybe it's unfair to say that they have a shaky relationship with Rwanda, but they certainly have a complex relationship with Rwanda, um, 
which we see in DRC at the moment through uh, Tanzania's engagement with M23 as part of the uh, SADA commission in DRC. Slide, please. And finally, we have the um, Defence and Security Forces of Mozambique. Um, that their their um, their resources issues are, are are well known in terms of the capacity of troops, man, uh, management and command issues, and 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 just basic uh, resourcing and you know, the, the the ability to pay troops on time, but possibly a a, a, a more worrying. Um, uh issue is is their relationship with uh communities in in um, northern mozambique um over the course of the conflict if you look at uh, political violence events that have involved fadm 13 percent of them have been targeting civilians and 30 percent of those events have been in Makomia district um which may possibly explain why um, um ism has 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 a uh, decided to um, base itself there for the time being. But it, it, it certainly opens up a, uh, a worrying vista as troops uh, from Samen get ready for departure, um, a drawdown that has already begun. Um, and let me now hand over to Lad and uh, myself and Tomash can deal with any questions. Okay. Um, well, it looks like we're down to just the, the final minute here. So I think we will have to unfortunately wrap up. We have more uh, questions than we could get to. Um, but I think that just signals that there's a lot of interest uh, in the topic. And um, perhaps we can have another briefing like this in the near future and, and get some more of these fantastic questions that so many of you um, have raised. So um, I do appreciate everyone attending today and uh, and carving out the time in your schedule uh, to be a part of the conversation. Uh, thank you to Tomasz and, and Peter for, um, yeah, just being able to bring together such uh, timely analysis uh, and uh, share this with everyone. So uh, much appreciated. Uh, thank you to all for coming and uh, look. For, I hope you can join us again at a future webinar. Have a nice rest of your day.